Is buying an EV worth it? Internet forums are full of testimonials from satisfied EV drivers as well as criticisms from those who feel internal combustion engine gives them the freedom to travel like nature intended. Emotions are the worst advisors, so today I'll try to tell you how it is, taking into account arguments from both sides which I think are sensible. So, let's go! In the future, charging will be simple, fast and wildly available. We keep hearing this since first mass-produced EVs hit the market. Ten years later, only Tesla has simple, fast and in some regions widely available charging facilities and others… Um, we'll get to that in a moment. The most important thing, in my opinion, is to have a permanent charging spot, a place which you can always access and charge your car relatively cheaply. Usually this means your home or work. I advise against hunting for free chargers, if there are still any in your area, because I'm sure you'd not be the only smartass who tries to take advantage of, say, a courtesy charger at your local supermarket. Leave it for those who pop in to do their groceries. If you have a home with a driveway or a garage, charging is usually as simple as plugging in. Perhaps a regular 240 volt socket is enough, or maybe you want a wall box outputting 7, 11 or 22 kilowatts. Depends on what you need and what car you take. If you live in an apartment building, things can get complicated. Either you need the building management's permission to install a wall box in the garage, or you need to find some on-street charging options. For the latter, you'll need to check your area and see if there are any such chargers located within what you consider convenient distance from your home or work, check how much it costs to use them, etc. I'm lucky enough to have a home with a driveway where I recently installed a wall box which currently allows me to charge up to 11 kilowatts, but I will apply for a higher output and will ultimately spit out even 22 kilowatts, assuming cars I'm reviewing can take this much. Now, as far as charging is concerned, costs are important and it's an argument raised by both sides of the EV debate. AC charging, which is basically the kind of electricity we have at home, costs as much as your home electricity. Check your last bill, see the price per kilowatt hour, multiply that by the battery size in the car that you're interested in, and that's how much you'll pay to fill up, more or less. A bonus is having access to some free renewable energy like solar panels or maybe a wind turbine. I have solar panels and net metering, which means I don't have to store excess energy produced in the summer. I send it to the grid and can recoup most of it when I need it. Most because my energy provider gets to keep 20% of what I send to the grid as sort of a payment for storing my energy. So. Whether or not an EV will be worth it for you depends on the price of energy, price of the car, battery size, efficiency, mileage, and the price of alternative means of transport. Mileage is important because it may turn out your cheap home charging isn't enough to get you to your destination, and the more you rapid charge along the way, the more expensive using your EV gets. To fill up your regular ICE car with petrol, you just need to go to the nearest petrol station and the difference between station A and station B can be, I don't know, a couple of cents per liter. However, charging networks uh, are a bit more complicated. There are more variables to consider. You may be charged differently for the same number of kilowatt hours based on the output of the charger, the power output, the time you spend charging and possibly the type of subscription you have. And if you don't have an account and subscription and you just want to swipe your credit card and charge, you're likely to pay the most. As EVs are most efficient at relatively low speeds and rapid chargers are usually located next to motorways, it turns out that 500 kilometers of range promised shrinks to, say, 300 kilometers and charging may take not 30 but, say, 45 minutes. Because range and charging speed vary depending on factors like weather. Sure, ICE cars will use 10 to 15% more fuel in the winter when it's minus 10 or minus 15 degrees Celsius outside. EVs start losing range when it's 10 degrees outside, plus 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, 
And as it gets colder, problems with fast charging start. Planning a longer route, it's best to take into account something called the charging curve. When shopping for an EV, the salesperson may tell you this car charges at, for example, 200 kilowatts. Yes, at the peak of the charging curve, which is usually a relatively low state of charge, and as you put more electrons into the battery, charging becomes slower, obviously. And sure, if you want to fill up your car with petrol to the brim, the last couple of liters may take a minute versus, say, four minutes to fill the first 50 liters. But you're not losing 20 minutes to charge the last 20%. Charging an EV is somewhat different. The advertised charging speed is usually around 30 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge, assuming the stars are in your favor, meaning there is sufficiently powerful charger and the battery is at the right temperature. However, the last 20% may take another 20 minutes, so charging to full is usually a waste of time. It's better to drive to the next rapid charger, but that means charging will not allow you to drive 300, but maybe 250 kilometers. And in order to accelerate the charging process in winter, you can precondition the battery. This means either setting the satnav to the next charger, and the car will figure out why you're going there, or in more advanced cars, route planning takes charging into account and the car automatically preconditions the battery as you approach the planned charging stop. This, of course, means slightly higher energy consumption, which may be a problem if charging infrastructure isn't reliable. In that case, it's best to know a backup charging location. Not a problem if you're traveling along the same routes or if you're not in a hurry and Perhaps you can wait for the person occupying the charger to finish their session. In some parts of Europe, charging hubs seem like they could never be fully occupied, but I'm sure there are some holiday peaks when drivers are ready to kill for a quick charge. Recently, the internet was full of reports from the US where Tesla owners couldn't charge because of cold weather. But then Americans tend to use public charging networks more often than Europeans, and they tend to travel longer distances, so they need to charge more often. But let's assume you're buying an EV to commute to work on preset routes. You have a place to charge cheap or even free. Thanks to my solar panels, I have 1500 kilowatt hours of free energy to put in an EV. Let's assume average energy consumption of 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, less in the summer, more in the winter, and driving around the city and maybe some roads with speed limit up to 90 kilometers per hour, that gives me 10,000 kilometers of free motoring annually. According to Eurostat, the average energy price for household consumers in the first half of 2023 was around 30 euro cents. So once I use up my free solar energy, 100 kilometers of EV driving costs me four and a half euro. That's just cheap home charging, no street or rapid charging. Depending on where you live, driving an EV can have some benefits like maybe access to bus or high occupancy lanes, free or dedicated parking spaces. This could compensate for the higher cost of buying an EV. This MG4, which you see in the cutaways now, is cheap for what it is, but in order to better illustrate prices of petrol and electric cars, let's look at the Peugeot 208 and E208. In Germany, that's almost 13,000 euro difference. Same thing with the Kia Niro HEV and EV. The average price of Euro 95 gasoline in Europe is about 1.6 euro per liter. So let's say five liters per 100 kilometers, that's eight euro to drive 100 kilometers and 10,000 kilometers will cost 800 euro. Let's assume 20,000 kilometers a year. For an EV, I get half of that free and the other half will cost me 450 euro versus 1600 euro for gas I would have to put in my ICE car. So in order to make up 13,000 euro difference in purchase price, I'd have to drive the EV for 11 years, perhaps a bit less if some incentives were involved. Also, servicing cost of the ICE car is higher, but you'll have to factor in some energy losses during charging. So I'd say this will even out. So, is an EV worth it? It really depends on individual situation. If we put aside the issues with charging EVs on longer road trips, then everyday comfort of traveling in quiet and without vibrations is undeniable. 
You may also save time because you charge at home or at work, and you may also save money if you use bus lanes, uh, park for free, use dedicated parking spaces, enter low emissions zones for free, etc. Of course, as EVs go mainstream, these benefits will gradually disappear, but hopefully then, charging will be simple, fast, and wildly available. These are only some of the advantages and disadvantages of using EVs. What about breathtaking acceleration? And what about higher mass, which affects infrastructure? And what about preheating? Yeah, but what about quicker tire wear? And what about battery longevity, residuals? There are so many things to take into account, but it's up to you to decide what's it worth for you. What's your experience with EVs so far? Do you agree with my observations? Do you have some tips for people who are planning to get into EVs? The comment section is all yours. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.